measurement in psychology. Yeah. Today we have an awesome guest. Please welcome Dr. Paul Poche. Yes, it is a, a pleasure to be here on your show again. Thank you very much. Uh, for inviting. Pleasure is all ours, good sir. As a reminder, there are five steps to the scientific method. One, we develop a theory. Two, design an experiment. Number three, formulate a hypothesis. Number four, measure the outcome. Number five, rinse and repeat. But number four, measure an outcome. How do we do that? Well, before we talk about that, we need to identify what a construct is. A construct is, it is, It's a... It's a thing? It's uh, something we wish to measure? Uh, uh, a construct refers to any uh, complex psychological concept. Examples would be a person's motivation, anger, personality, etc. A construct's height, weight, or depth cannot be measured because constructs are not uh, concrete materials in the, uh, the, uh, the visible world. And uh, we know how anger or love look, but, uh, but we cannot describe in inches or pounds how much there is or uh, where it starts and ends, and that, that uh, definition comes from uh, al alleydog.com. Oh, that's a funny name. I don't know why they chose Alley Dog. It's a funny one. Depression, anxiety, anger, love, hate, intelligence, awesomeness, statistical knowledge, pinky, wit, gotcha. <laughs> that, that's not a real construct. So how do we know if measurement actually works? Can we use calipers? <laughs> I don't think so. How about measuring tape? Uh-uh. Oh, a dial indicator. No, that ain't it. Protractor? Nope. Truth is, we really don't know how to measure these psychological constructs. That's what makes psychology hard. These physicists, they have it easy. Instead, we measure around the constructs. Self-reported depression, parental ratings of misbehavior, number of question rights on a statistics exam, you know it's coming, reaction time as a measure of cognitive functioning. All these measures need to be reliable, reliable, and valid. Valid! Reliability means consistency. If we measure the same person twice, do we get the same results? But there are lots of ways we can assess reliability. We can do what's called test-retest reliability. Yeah, and, and all that means is that we, uh, we, we measure the same person twice, and we simply compute the, uh, the correlation coefficient between the two times and square the measure. That's all we do. Yeah, what he said. Yeah, you just measure them twice and see how consistent they are in their answers. There's also internal consistency. And that basically assesses the degree to which they are uh, consistent in their answers on the same questionnaire. So um, you, you compute correlations within the items themselves. Totally. And then there's inner rater reliability. Yeah, and that just measures the degree to which two, two people rating something, some psychological construct, such as a child's behavior, it, it, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, internal rater reliability, I'm, I'm sorry, inter rater reliability, my mistake. The, the, the inter rater reliability assesses the degree to which um, two people agree on a child's misbehavior or something like that. So that's reliability. What about validity? V validity means that we're we're uh, we're measuring what we actually think we are we are attempting to measure here. So if if you're trying to measure depression, for example, um, a, a valid measure of depression will actually me measure. Uh, it'll measure depression. And if you're trying to measure someone's statistics know-how, guess what? That test had better measure their statistical know-how. Eh? Or suppose you're trying to measure the awesomeness of my YouTube channel. How do you measure infinity? Unfortunately, we can't directly measure the validity of a test. 
How do you know that you're measuring depression? How do you know you're measuring statistics know-how? How do you know you're measuring the awesomeness of my YouTube channel? You don't know for sure, but you gather evidence that you are actually measuring what you think you're measuring. That, that is correct, and there are multiple um, types of validity, multiple ways we can gather evidence. For example, there is uh, predictive validity, which means does the measure that you have predict something that theoretically it should measure? For example, the SAT is supposed to measure college performance. Well, let's see if it correlates with college GPA. That would be a assessment of predictive validity. And another type would be uh, convergent validity, which means that uh, if we have multiple measures of the same construct, um, ideally they should all um, correlate with one another. We should get uh, consistent results from uh, each of the various measures of, uh, of, uh, of whatever construct you're trying to measure there. For example, if you're trying to measure one's YouTube awesomeness, you might count the number of likes, the number of subscriptions, the number of views, the content creator's self-reported beliefs about their awesomeness, for example. And if all these metrics seem to agree and give the same answer about someone's YouTube popularity, well, guess what? You have evidence that there is convergent validity. Another one is discriminant validity, which means that the measure that you have is not correlated with things that it shouldn't be correlated with. Uh, right. So, for example, there is a, there is a, there's no reason to suspect that one's intelligence is uh, correlated with their height, for example, at least once you reach into adulthood. And, um, and if it's, and if it, let's say you've got a measure of intelligence you're trying to construct and, uh, and if, uh, if it, it is not correlated with their height, then that provides uh, even further evidence um, via vis a vis the uh, discriminant validity. Right you are, Dr. Poche. Now hold up! Why are we even talking about this? Isn't this a statistics class? Why are we talking so much about measurement? Uh, I'd be happy to take that one, because you see, if, if uh, if our measures aren't aren't really uh, measuring what we we think they're measuring, then then there's there's no reason, um, there's no rationale, no sense in trying to make conclusions uh, from whatever statistics we compute. That's the real sum of the question. If your measures aren't reliable and valid, then then it makes no sense whatsoever to do statistics. Right, you are. So now let's look at the big picture. Probably should have cleaned first. The scientific method requires that we map constructs into numbers. Then we use statistics to summarize and make inferences about those numbers. And if our numbers don't even measure the constructs, then it's all meaningless. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But it's always looming in the background. Always. So what? That means before you even run the data analysis, you should be assessing reliability. You should be assessing validity. Finding evidence that your measure is both consistent, reliable, and valid, that it's actually measuring what you think it's measuring. And only after you are confident that it is reliable and valid can you proceed with doing statistical analysis. Peace out. Uh, wait, wait. Um... What, what about uh, a variable type? Uh, fine. There are, uh, there, are, um, there are four types of variables. Uh, nominal is a type of variable, which means that it is a named variable. Gender, political affiliation, favorite color perhaps. So if you have a variable that is measured via um, a nominal, or that is a nominal variable, you can count them, but you can't add them up. It makes no sense to ask what is a male plus a female. You can't add them, you can just count them. You can count the number of males, count the number of females. Then there is an ordinal variable, which means that a variable is both named and ordered in some way. For example, placement in a race, first, second, and third, or uh, 
rank on an exam, for example. So with ordinal variables, you can count them and you could rank them, but still you can't add them. What is first place plus third place? <laughs> it's not fourth place. It doesn't even make sense, does it? <laughs> well, that's... After ordinal, we have interval, which means that we have something numbered, but the zero point is meaningless. Yeah, so for example, uh, temperature, whether uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius, doesn't make a difference either way. Um, the zero point means nothing in Fahrenheit. What is the temperature of zero? Well, that's just cold. And what about in Celsius, temperature point of zero means the point at which water freezes. Um, that's not entirely arbitrary, but still arbitrary nonetheless. That doesn't, uh, zero doesn't mean you have the absence of temperature here. Right, you are. So with interval scales, there is no meaningful zero points, but in this case, you can add them, you can count them, you could rank order them, you can subtract them but you can't really divide them or multiply them. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to say that 100 degrees is twice as hot as 50 degrees because again, the, the zero point is arbitrary. Right, and it doesn't make sense to say the year 2000 is two times more than the year 1000 because again, there's no zero point. And finally, we've got a ratio scale, which is like an interval scale, except that there is a true meaningful zero point. Uh, yeah, that's right. So like the Kelvin temperature scale, uh, zero means there is truly an absence of any form of heat. Or, or another example, uh, money in your bank account, you can actually have a zero. You, you, you can have zero money in your bank account. That, that just means you're, you're dead. Right. In age, you can have a true zero point. The minute, second, instant you are born. And with ratio scales, you can add, you can subtract, you can multiply, you can divide, you can do any sort of mathematical operation you want. And now we have the freedom to say that we have twice as much of whatever we want than before. We have the ability to use multiplication. I'm twice as old now as I was at the age of 16 and a half-ish. But really now, we really only care about two variable types. Categorical variables, which covers the name or nominal and ordinal variables, versus the numeric variables, the interval and the ratio variables. And why do we care? Because if you have categorical variables, it changes the different type of plots we use and the different types of estimates that we report. That, that's right. So for example, you can't compute the mean of people's favorite color. You, you just can't. You know, what is uh, blue plus red divided by two, for example? It just doesn't make sense. So that's why we care. Different variable types require different sorts of calculations and different sorts of graphics, and we'll see that throughout this course. Now can we end? Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, been a pleasure to be here. You want me to do the, the thing? All yours. All right, let's see here. Let's, uh, let's see here. So, um... How was that? Brilliant.